hey, y'all better get on board because I am fixing to go down there to the bayou and I am going to cook me up a great shrimp etouffee. Got all the wonderful spices in the world. The cowboys going Cajun. Come on, let's load the boat. And what are we doing? Ooh, we is doing us some cowboy cooking. You know, Mardi Gras is coming up, so what do you think this is going to be? A little cowboy Cajun etouffee. And on a day like today, it will warm you up in a heartbeat. It is a dish that I really love. It's got a good thick roux that goes with it that mm, just blends all them flavors together. But the recipe and everything that we use, just as always, will be right down there below in the little description, and it will give you the exact amounts. So, let's talk about Now, I like to use shrimp in mine. You can put sausage in it. You can put anything you want. But I like to use big old jumbo red shrimp because to me they have such a better taste. But I do like it with crawdads too. So before we go any further with this, I need to go ahead and chop up these little red shrimp because I just like to chop them in half. That way I'll make sure that everybody's good, getting a good bite. And you ain't got to be precise about this because they're going to cook down just a little and shrink I just want them to be a little more of a bite-sized piece. But I love to use red shrimp because to me they got a better taste. And folks, you want to make sure you get all the peelings off of them. But this has got to have something to give it so much of that great flavor. And what did we take? Ooh, we took us some celery. I like to split it down the middle, then chop it fine. Then I took me a green bell pepper, split it all up and diced it well. Then I took me some garlic cloves and minced them really well, and then some onion and diced them really well. But y'all seen me take that old poblano pepper over, throw it on the fire, roast it, get it good and blistered. Take you a plastic bag, put you a little bit of water in there, throw that pepper in there, tie it up tight, let it sweat. That skin will peel off there oh so well. Or if you need to leave a little of that char on there, because that char does add some flavor too, you leave some of it on there. Dice it up, put it in there, you're ready to go. All our veggies are in intact and our little shrimpies is waiting to join them. Well, it is time to get after this deal because me and the big is getting hungry and company will be coming. Because remember what I told you? You break out food, what happens? People show up. So I'm making a big batch. So we have broke out the old 20 today. Well, the butter has melted. And let me tell you folks, if you're doing this at the house on a burner, put it on about medium low heat instead of flame licking your eyebrow heat. Here we go. Get all that goodness in the pan. Y'all be thinking that's a bunch. You ain't seen these folks that's coming. They do love to eat. Now, we're gonna cook this down in this butter probably for about 30 minutes. So sort of keep your eye on your time there because all this has got to get really good and tender. That's what's gonna make this dish so good. Well, We've been on about 10. As you can see, this here butter is beginning to sweat things really good. And after about that amount of time, I like to give it a little coarse ground black pepper and a little bit of salt. Now, folks, I ain't never been a vegetarian, I don't think. But I could eat that stuff right now because it is smelling good. I better not say that, had I? What? I haven't been a vegetarian. The vegetarians will be down on me. Well... These have got good and tender, been on about 20, maybe 30 minutes, somewhere between there, whatever you think it takes, to get them to where they are tender and they have browned just a little. Now, that butter and that onion and all them good veggies in there are going to get them a sprinkling of some flour. Now, this is going to help thicken that roux here in a little bit when we add the rest of the stuff to it. Don't just dump it all in one spot. we got to incorporate and then we're just going to go to give it in a stir, get them veggies coated good with that flour. And I like to let this cook down to where it thickens up pretty good, and it'll all stick together. And then we'll go on with it. Now, if you're cooking this on a stovetop, a regular batch recipe, you're going to cook this down nearly 10 minutes to where it gets good and thickened. But you can see Christine here, she has got what you call on high heat. It ain't going to take me that long. But just keep a stirring, getting her all incorporated there. Mash her back out. We want that flour to get on everybody and give it a good coating. That way we can make this stuff good, creamy broth. Now, if Shan will zoom in here, I want you to see where all that stuff has incorporated all. We hardly got no moisture left. 
that's sort of what I'm after, folks. So next, chicken broth. And where does the box go? Right down here in the incinerator. Then, guess what come next? As my good friend Justin Wilson would say, some wine. But we gotta check it first. It was a really good year. <laughs> Oh, no. I do, Shan. I'm a connoisseur of wine. Love to use a white wine with this. Now, let's get to stirring. And guess what's going to come in there next? All them little shrimpies. Let's just get this to where it's all incorporated wild, and we will get them shrimps and put them in here with this. And this is at that point, folks, to where you have to continue stirring the whole time or things will happen. Do I need to stir while you get him? Uh-huh. Hand me the spoon. People say I don't work. Let me rotate. Oh, there's a grass bird. You can see this has already got good and thickened up here. We're going to bring this back to a good simmer all the way around. So here come our little shrimpies to join in the party. And we're, so we're going to cook this about 15 minutes, and I want it to simmer. So I'm going to slide it back over here till them shrimp get a good and pink color to them. So keep stirring. Keep an eye on it. If it happens to think that you're going to say getting a little thick, a little more wine or a little more chicken broth, whatever you want to thin it with. Now, you see me cooking it in this big old 20-inch cast iron skillet, but you can use a stew pot, big old gumbo pot, whatever you got. But I love to cook it in cast iron because it brings out so much more of that flavor. Now, them shrimp's been on until they get good and tender. And you can see how them red shrimp turn sort of white. I know they're done. Now, them regular old shrimp, they'll begin to turn really pink when they get done. But, whoo, y'all just lucky I don't go ahead and bite that right now. But let's talk about the wine that we cooked it with today. This is just a white wine that we really like. Use whatever you like to drink as a white wine to put in there with your cooking with it. Now, you can use whatever brand you got or some port wine. Old Justin Wilson just used to reach right under that cabinet, pour out a bottle of that port wine, jerk the cork out of it and say, I guarantee you that is some good. Woo la la. As Justin Wilson also said, I don't know if y'all can smell that. Let me fan it y'all's way just a little bit and see. Can you smell it? Look at all them good, rich colors. That root done got thick. Everything is there. I prefer to eat it with some rice. Get me some of this all up on it. Make sure you get plenty of that there juice. So we got started. Pardon me while I go back one more time. Folks, this is probably some of the best flavor I ever slapped on my tongue with the eating device. It is the spice that you get out of here is not the spiciness of hot, but the flavors that blend together from the garlic, the onion, the bell pepper, and the poblano. But them red shrimp, kick it over the top. You add that white wine too there and chicken broth to thicken that back up. 
You in good shape, I guarantee you this dog will hunt every day. Well, I just want to tell you, I hope y'all have enjoyed something today. This is a dish that is pretty easy to cre create. It will take a little time, but ooh, it is so tasty. Invite the neighbors over, celebrate Mardi Gras, do it all upright, wear you some beads, keep your top on though. Don't be taking your top off and get them beads, I don't appreciate that. But we thank you so much. Everything that we use will be listed right down there below. As always, I'd like to salute our veterans and our servicemen and women who have all kept that old flag flying free right up there above this camp for so long. I tip my hat to you and God bless you. And to all you people who are watching out there, hey, be sure and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and share the food and the videos to everyone that you see because that's what food is about, bringing family together. So God bless you, each and every one, and we'll see you down there. Oh, hang on a minute, Shan. We got company coming, remember? And look at it's our audience. Y'all come on up. Y'all may recognize these folks and the Grand Champion Pickle Fried Pickle. Right here. Some good people. They are like family. Pick a utensil of your choice, whichever you think will hold the most in one bite. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, after you eat my I'm going to need a bigger spoon. After you eat this food, it will make you go into a happy dance. It always has me. Happy dance! <laughs> you got a happy dance! <laughs> you will see if you share food with family and everybody else that comes around, it'll make you have a happy dance every day, and that's what life is about. You better stick around because I'm going to show you something that is so delicious. What are we, what are you going to show us? I don't know what call it. <laughs> Ready? This is the really quick one, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. That quick enough? It don't help to have an audience that's laughing. Nobody's staring at you. Yeah, no man. Uh, ready to go now? I'm ready. Are you? I'm not. <laughs> How many takes? That's four. Usually takes 12. Go. No, I wasn't ready.